in Europe there's a wide variety of pay gaps between different countries. Um, so for example, take a country like France where there's a gap of around 15% uh, in, the, in the pay of uh, women and men, but this climbs to around 22% in Germany and that's partly explained by the growth of short, part-time, low-paid jobs in Germany over recent years. But the, the pay gap actually rises to as high as 30% in Estonia. But then in other countries we find lower gaps, for example in Italy, more like around 7%. But this reflects that actually fewer women are on the labour market and those women that do work are actually in better paid jobs. our research actually shows is that pay gaps are constantly moving. So as one gap closes, another gap opens up, for example, between different groups uh, according to their ethnic origins. Or um, One of the studies in, our, in this collection that we've, we've put together includes the pay gaps for people with doctorates. And even there, we're with women and men with the highest levels of education and very strong career aspirations, we still find pay gaps opening up uh, once people graduate from their PhDs. There are some measures on the labour market that do help. For example, minimum wages help bring everybody's pay up at the bottom. Of the, and because women are often concentrated at the bottom of the labour market, their pay comes up disproportionately. So they, we close up some gaps. But then what we see through our work is that pay gaps open up in other areas. Uh, there's new, new gradings between different types of occupations which open up gaps between women and men. And there's particularly large pay gaps at the top end of the labour market where pay might be negotiated separately or there's much more uh, greater use of individualised contracts. This line of research that we've been doing, we've been working on for a number of years and this is, a, this is the latest phase of that, that research. Um, and it's important for us because it demonstrates the interaction between policies and outcomes on the labour market because often policies are seen as, okay, there's a solution and then we move on to the next problem. But actually policies create perhaps unintended consequences or policies create partial solutions, in which case we need to improve or to, to tweak uh, different, the different policies.